Hello everyone. Thank you so much for coming to our video today. We're gonna have some great information for you today. Now, if you're planning to drive your car in Mexico, make sure you watch this video because it's gonna help you a lot. We're gonna go over our experiences of driving in Mexico and what can you expect. We're gonna go over things like what you need to get inside Mexico, the documents, tips about the road, police are they gonna stop you or they're not what to do what to do and all the stuff that's gonna help you when you are driving in Mexico we're gonna go all of that information for you today so make sure you stick to the end and if you're new please don't forget to hit the like button if you like our content and subscribe so you don't miss any of future adventures now let's begin <laughs> So our tip number one is how to get ready to get your car into Mexico documents that you will need. To drive your car into Mexico, you will need three things. One, it's a Mexican insurance. You can call your insurance company to see if they work in Mexico. If not, just Google some Mexican insurance. They a lot cheaper than your uh, American counterparts. Also, you will need your car title and you will need your car registration to bring those three things with you. Once you get into Mexico, you will need two things. The first one is your FMM, that's your visa to get inside Mexico. Now, if you're going to Mexico for less than seven days, this is free. If you're going for more than seven days, it's around $40. After that, you have to go to the office for your temporary import permit or your tip for your car so you can drive your car legally now depends on where you're going if you're going to some regions in mexico you will not need the permit if you're going to baja baja peninsula you do not need your car permit your tip if you're going around 50 miles after the border and you stay within that limit you also don't need to have your permit and also cantina rule on on the other side of the country of mexico you also don't need your car permit there so that's some of the few things to keep in mind but if you're going from the northern from the united states all the way to quintana Roo, so just think about getting your tip just so you can drive because you will be asked for it for your tip there's a 400 dollars deposit that you wouldn't have to pay. If you pay in cash, when you get back to the border, you will be given that back in cash. If you pay with a card, same thing, you will be given back in the card. We paid cash and it worked fine. We received cash back. A lot of yeah. people are like, not sure that they're gonna get the cash back. So yes, that's how it works. So yes, we got cash back. And <laughs> if you stay in the country for six months or so, and you stay after the six months, then you will lose that deposit. So one thing to keep in mind, just to make sure you get your car out of the country in time so you don't lose your deposit. And another thing is when you're getting into your car permit and your visa, they will ask you for copies of your passport, black and white, copies of your license for your tip, copies of your insurance card, copies of your registration and your title so make sure you have at least two to three extra copies on black and white on each one of these documents so you can have with you yeah. when you go get your permit and your visa and also have them in different location like one of them in a luggage like set and one of them in a car so you can have it kind of different places all the documents mm -hmm. <laughs> So now we're going to talk about the gas stations in Mexico. So basically we recommend that when you were driving a long distance, like five hours, four hours and up, to make sure that you always have like half tank in your car. If you see that it's getting to this level, find a good gas station, like a large one, because sometimes on the roads, you're going to be having areas that you don't have a gas station for like many hours. Alright, so once you get in the gas station, it is a full service, so they will put the gas on for you. Some of the things that you need to remember if you want a full tank, you'll say lleno, which means full tank, and point at the type of gas that you want to put on in your car. It's usually a green one, so you can just say verde or just point at it. The lleno, this one. They all know. Um, they will also 
clean your windshield and it's most of the time they most of the time they clean, clean it and it is suspected for a tip I uh, usually tip a few pesos I carry a few pesos in my next to me 10 pesos or so you give them it should be fine all our experience driving in Mexico we never had issue with the uh, gas station we did hear some stories on Facebook and stuff in the groups that people did complain but we never had the bad experience with that <laughs> So the next topic is the road, the road conditions, what roads to take so you can feel safer when you're driving in Mexico. One of the things that I will say is the toll roads in Mexico are better than the non-toll roads in Mexico. You will kind of tell what they are because when you're looking at the map it will say something like 15 and 15D. The D part is the toll part of the road, so you know you get into a toll road if it has a D. Those roads will have better roads, less potholes, more security passing through than you often see the police trucks with the Check guns points. on the back. Uh, you have uh, checkpoints, more police stopping you to make sure that you're okay and that you're not trafficking anything. Uh, so it's some the things that you have to keep in mind. So the toll roads, we felt safer when we were in Mexico with the toll roads. Other than the safer roads and more policing is, it's faster to move around from point A to point B with the toll roads most of the time. A bad thing about it is that it can get expensive oh, yeah. fast. Um, make sure you always have pesos on you and if you're driving on a road for six, seven hours, don't be surprised if you're spending 1,000, 2,000 pesos in toll roads alone. So some of the worst ones that we had was going to Mazatlan. And yeah, there's, there's a lot of- No, it's, uh, it's over 2,000 uh, pesos, like yeah. those five hours of driving. Yeah, so it, is you're gonna find toll roads maybe every 30 minutes or so. Uh, some of them can be 200 pesos, 300 pesos. We had some that was like around five, 500 pesos. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so make sure you always keep cash on you because you have a lot of toll rolls if you're going from city to city. And the good thing that you have an app that you can check before you're going on the road, you can just put the, uh, the destination you need and the app will tell you how much is how much money you will need to, to bring. The app is Toll Guru. Most of the time it's correct, but sometimes it can be incorrect, so just have some extra cash on you. Um, there's going to be also a few people jumping on the car trying to clean your windshield. Some of them will fast. <laughs> so it's just oh. yes, <laughs> just has some cash on like, you to give. <laughs> oh, that's a funny thing. So yes, just cash. Always on have like in, in a car in the side of the car, like the pockets. Always have a change there, like a bus drivers. That's what you need. Five, ten, fifteen pesos. Always. Like people will sell you stuff on the lights. You know, like it's fun. Mm -hmm. Also, another great thing about driving in Toros is that you will have help if you get stuck in the road. I believe the number for that that you can call is 078. We're gonna put it here in the screen, so you, the right number, so you can know. But 078, if you get stuck, something happens, gas, flat tire, they will go there and help you. They're called green angels, mostly on the toll roads from what we know. So one of the things that is normal here in Mexico is the checkpoints. There is a lot of checkpoints when you're going from city to city. Sometimes it's a, it can be a fast one. The National Guard will just pull you over, ask you where you're going. If you don't look suspicious, they'll let you go. Uh, sometimes they might ask you for your temporary car import permit that we talked about earlier. So make sure you have that on you in the car at all times. Some people yeah. do check it and just check the VIN number and everything sometimes. Sometimes they just look at it, okay, let you go. Some places in the hot area, you have the checkpoints more frequently, like every 30 minutes or so. Um, yeah. Doesn't matter that the last people check you, then you will get checked again. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, sometimes they uh. might even. <laughs> Sometimes they might even check your car, t- tell you to step out of the car for it a minute. It happened to us a few times. They just uh, told us to get out so with they, the dogs. Yeah, they just open the glove compartment, see anything, very quick look on the outside, and they say, okay, bye, you're free to go. We didn't have any bad experiences with them. It can be a little of a hassle, but think about it this way. They are there to make your stay more safe. There are occasions that we have seen online of people going not on the toll rolls and being stopped by cartels so that's why we always pick the toll rolls and if the checkpoints means that i won't have to go through a robbery on the road i'm all for it i don't mind at all i prefer just a little bit of hassle talking to a police officer than talking to a cartel member yeah, we're gonna make another video about our personal experiences that we had on the roads because we did have some very interesting things that we've seen in all this time we've been driving. We've seen guns and that's gonna be another topic. So make sure you're gonna follow our channel and just subscribe so you can see more content and like it if you like it. <laughs>
thing to keep in mind when you're driving in Mexico is the speed bumps. They are everywhere and they are huge. The bigger ones are when you're going from city to city. And what makes them so dangerous is that half the times they are not painted over so you will not see them coming. Make sure you stick to the speed limit so you don't hit them hard when you're driving. If you're driving behind somebody else, that's a good tip because they're slowing down and you, when they're slowing down, that usually means that there's a speed bump. Another good way to know when you're going to get speed bumps, when you're going on the highway and sometimes it turns to people selling on the side of the road, there's usually going to be about three or four speed bumps there for the next mile for just a little area for people to sell their stuff. And I guess so you can see them when I kill nobody with driving so fast, they have huge speed bumps there. So if you drive from city to city, you will see them and half of them will not be painted over. Keep that in mind. <laughs> and don't drive at night because at night you definitely have no chance of seeing them. They can show up out of nowhere and potholes also can show up out of nowhere. And animals, animals. cow. Yes, there's animals all over the spot there when you're going from city to city, sometimes when you're driving in the same city or town. Mm -hmm. So driving at night, not really recommended unless you're very familiar with the road. So keep that in mind. Just one thing for you to stay safe on the road over there in Mexico. Bonus tip that really helped us a lot was to join the Facebook group on the road in Mexico. This group helped us so much during our travels in Mexico. You can go there to ask about what roads to take to your destination and past experiences on the road or destination. It's a great way to find out what has recently happened on the roads in Mexico and the community is great and very helpful. Thank you so much for watching until the end. If you found today's video useful, please hit the like button and subscribe to help us grow our channel. We truly appreciate it. And we hope you have a wonderful day. See you next time. <music>